Thank you, council members, uh, for this opportunity to share my message of aloha. Special thank you to Councilman Augie for the direct invite. And I want to say one thing. Hi, Dad. He's watching. So I just want to get into it. What I want you to do is direct your thoughts right now in this moment to the high points of joy in your life. Think about those. Then I want you to direct your thoughts to the low point of sad points in your life and think about those. Those moments of joy, what would they be? Weddings, the birth of a child, high school graduations. Isn't it nice we've stopped doing the gangster graduation, the drive-by, and we can actually sit in a seat now and see our kids cross the stage. Imua Kamehameha, I just went to the 2022 graduates this past weekend and congratulations to all our high school seniors who get to walk across the stage finally after COVID. For the sad moments in our life, we think of maybe a terminal diagnosis. Maybe we think of a broken relationship. Maybe a death of a loved one. Well, I would tell you that the connection between or the commonplace between the high points in our life and the low points in our life is most likely it involved people. Today, my message of aloha, I want to share with you the wisdom of a author and a corporate consultant who studied business and organizations for over 25 years. His name is Patrick Lencioni, and he wrote a book called The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. He followed it up with another book called The Ideal Team Player. And there's something that he noticed in these organizations, maybe it's in your organization, we hope, that they were filled with ideal team players and there were three virtues that all of these ideal team players have. And I'm gonna share them with you right now. They're humble, they're hungry, and they're smart. Let's talk about humble. C.S. Lewis has a quote. He says, humble, to be humble is not to think less of yourself, but it's to think of yourself less. I'll say that one more time. It's humble is not to think less of yourself, but it's to think of yourself less. What is, the, what is the opposite of humble? Arrogance. Ever been in an organization led by someone with a lot of arrogance in a team filled with arrogant team members? I would imagine a lot of dysfunction. So we want humble. Humbleness, in my opinion, is the glue that binds us together as human beings. The second virtue hungry. From Kapolei to the east side, we say, that person is hungry. From Kapolei to Makaha, we say, oh, that brother is hungry. I got a front row seat on people that are hungry. My dad was in the fire department. Every fireman is my good guess, has one second job. They always have a side hustle. They're hungry. What do you call a part-time realtor on Oahu? A lift driver. They always got a side hustle. They're hungry. What you call a part-time realtor on the outer islands? One bartender. Always got a side hustle. Hunger, sorry, um, yeah, hunger is not something that an organization brings to the individual. It's something that the individual must have, and they bring it to the organization because it was role modeled for them in childhood. You can't give people hunger. They got to have it. The third virtue the third virtue is smart. And I don't mean IQ smart or SAT score smart. I mean EQ or the emotional quotient or emotional intelligence. What are their people skills? How do they connect with other human beings? So these are the three virtues. And we ask ourselves, do you got to have all three? Well, let's talk about what Patrick shares with us when people have two of the three. First combination, humble and hungry. They're humble, they take direction, they're hungry, they get it done, but their people skills, eh, they get the job done, but they leave a wake of blown up relationships within your organization. He has a label for that, the accidental mess maker. The next combination, humble and smart. They take good direction, they have good people skills, but they're not really motivated. Last Christmas, you gave them a book on how to stop procrastinating. They keep telling you they're going to get to it. They're called the lovable slacker. 
The last one, you got to be careful with this one because they're great at interviews. They'll sneak into your organization. They may even be part of your organization and they're good at hiding. They're hungry and they're smart. So they're hungry in that they'll, they have a lot of ambition. They're smart in that they know what to say and when to say it. But when you as a leader are gone, they're very divisive in your organization when you're not around. This is Patrick's label, don't shoot the messenger, but he calls these people the skillful politician. Now, I know that's none of you here today, I, and I mean that sincerely. So knowledge is power, but it's not truly power until you execute on it. Would you all agree? Just give me a head nod. So I brought you guys some resources. I left them with uh, Councilman Augie, and he's going to hand them out. One of the resources, they're free on the website. Support him. Go order his book, Ideal Team Player. Read it with your organization. He's got in there a self-assessment. You give this to your team members, and they're going to assess themselves and see which of these three virtues they're strong in and which they might be weak in, and you need to work with them on. The next one, feedback is a gift. Would you all agree that feedback is a gift? Yes. If you love feedback, give the manager or leader assessment to your team members and have them assess you. And how are you in those three virtues, hum virtues, humble, hungry, smart? The last one is interview questions. How do you screen out the accidental mess maker, the lovable slacker, or the skillful politician from your team so that you can surround yourself with ideal team players that are humble, hungry, and smart? There's an African proverb that I'll wrap this up with, and we're getting close to the end. To go fast, go by yourself. To go far, go together. And if you want to even go further, wouldn't it make sense to surround yourself with ideal team players that are humble, hungry, and smart? I would say yes. One last pearl of wisdom. It's this. It's from four wise men of the 90s. You are my fire, the one desire. Believe when I say I want it that way. Don't you guys say in your minds, I want it that way? I want to surround myself with these ideal team members? Is that true? Yes. So we're going to, you know what I found is a good memory technique to remember something? Singing it. So I'm going to report, re repeat these pearls of wisdom, but you're going to help me with the last line, and it goes like this. Here's the tune. I want it that way. So that's the last part. So I'm going to sing the first three, and they're going to point to you, and you're going to come out from the edifice of your title as council members and show your humbleness and your humility to your constituents that you're real people getting the job done. So we're going to sing it together. Here we go. Now wait, I'm going to point and you're going to go, I want it that way. You got the tune. Okay, here we go. You are my fire, the one desire. Believe when I say I want it that way. The four wise men of the 90s, Backstreet Boys. So I leave you with this. I hope this message was helpful. I hope you take those resources and execute them in your team and surround yourselves with more humble, hungry, smart people so that you can do a little bit better, be more efficient, more effective, serving the communities that you've been elected for. Thank you and aloha.